In Bramble, a gripping tale unfolds as a young boy named Ole embarks on a perilous mission to rescue his sister, Lelamore. Along the way, he encounters fearsome trolls and monstrous creatures whose origins are rooted in eerie Nordic fables, each with their own intriguing and spine-chilling backstory. Hi folks, I'm R, your narrator, and welcome to Bramble. If you have any video or game suggestions, make sure to send them to me on my Twitter or subreddit. Keep in mind that the video will have spoilers, and with that in mind, let's begin. Right off the bat, I'm sorry if I mispronounce any of the names, as I'm pretty sure I'm gonna probably mess them up. The protagonist of the story, Ole, finds himself trapped in the realm of Bramble, a world deeply rooted in Nordic mythology where the Blackberry, also known as Yarkon, represents growth, fertility, and the promise of new beginnings. Additionally, the plant was believed to have protective qualities and was incorporated into rituals as a means of safeguarding against negative forces and malevolent spirits. As Ole journeys through the land of Bramble, he encounters a diverse array of spirits, both benevolent and malevolent. Some of the amicable creatures he befriends include the Rampanesar, woodland creatures with endearing features who cultivate plants on their heads, and the kind-hearted Lemos, a gentle giant who is often misunderstood and mistreated by others in the forest, and also lots of friendly gnomes whom Ole befriends. The Nordic etymology of the name Ole means troll killer, further highlighting Ole's heroic qualities as he braves the dangers of Bramble to rescue his sister. As Ole and his sister Lelamore make their way through the forest, Lelamore becomes entranced by a playful fairy before suddenly being ambushed by a colossal troll. The monster snatches Lelamore and throws her into his sack, attempting to capture Ole as well. Fortunately, Ole manages to elude the troll by jumping into the water and getting to safety. In the depths of the forest, Ole stumbles upon a cozy gnome abode. However, his moment of respite is short-lived as the towering troll obliterates the house, taking the lives of its inhabitants. Ole then soon discovers a massive stone gate which the troll seems to be guarding as a beam of light shines through it. Despite the danger, Ole climbs atop the gate, evading the troll once again. In a stroke of ill fortune, Ole becomes ensnared by the troll after being captivated by a spark of courage atop a poisonous red-caped mushroom. But the magic of the spark saves him as the light shines brightly, turning the giant monster to stone. In Norse mythology, the Jotuns or or giant trolls were massive humanoid creatures that existed long before the gods and were often associated with chaos and disorder. Although not inherently evil, they often embodied malevolent forces and were known for their destructive tendencies. Interestingly, Yotuns could also be turned to stone if exposed to sunlight, which could explain why the giant in the story was transformed into a statue after encountering Ole and his magical peril, which emitted a beam of light. Another monster we face is the Butcher. Ole comes across the Butcher's lair who is busy carving up a giant pink. The place is filled with blood and flesh of the animal through which Ole must navigate to continue his quest. Ole jumps through a few cages that he has seen in the past. The Butcher is a massive monstrous creature who Ole must confront in order to escape and save his sister. In a stroke of misfortune, Ole is eventually cut by the Butcher and thrown into a cage. The gluttonous monster is too preoccupied with cooking to notice Ole's daring escape plan, using his body to roll the cage down a hill and into the sewers. The cage crashes open, freeing Ole from his grim fate and allowing him to continue on his journey. In Nordic mythology, the cosmic bear Sahramnir was slaughtered and eaten every night by Esir. The god's cook was responsible for preparing the boar in a large pot over an open fire. After the feast, Sahramnir was brought back to life to provide food for for the following day. In the game, the butcher is seen preparing a large boar for cooking using a cauldron over an open fire. This suggests that the butcher might be Antramnir, the cook of the gods, who is known for preparing Soramnir for the gods' nightly feast. The 
Legend of Nakin, a demonic entity who uses his mesmerizing violin to lure children and adults to the lake where he kills and eats them, has roots in Norse mythology. Ole himself experiences the strange power of Nakin's violin, which causes him to lose control of his body and follow the melody straight to the creature's lair. Despite his best efforts to resist the trance, Ole is led to a pond where he must face the monstrous Nakin. After managing to escape, Ole finds skeletons of previous victims who were too scared to face the creature's power and perished from starvation. Among the remains, he discovers a book that tells the story of the talented violin player who left modestly in a small town. One day, he suffered a traumatic beating by jealous townsfolk. Under their torturous behavior, he fell into madness and began playing a melody so beautiful that it made everyone who heard it dance uncontrollably until they lost flesh from their feet, dancing days on end until they perished. Among all the men that abused them, there lied the corpse of the woman he loved who also died due to the enchanting melody of Nakken. After days of playing his violin, he realizes that he decimated the entirety of the population of the town, shocked to what he has done, seeing the innocent girl he loved who was actually on his side among the deceased, which made him break down and lose his mind entirely. Overcome with grief and guilt, the musician took this girl's body to the lake and played melodies for her in solitude until he began decomposing, killing anyone who came near him, turned him into the monstrous entity known as Nakin. Nakin is a creature of Nordic folklore that has been depicted in various ways across different countries, typically portrayed as a male but occasionally even as female. Nakin, also known as Nixie, is a water-dwelling entity that uses his musical talents to entice unsuspecting individual into the depths of the lake where he resides. His mesmerizing violin playing is so beautiful that it places those nearby into a trance-like state, causing them to lose control of their bodies and dance uncontrollably until they eventually perish by drowning or succumbing to the water's depths. While wandering through the burnt woods, Ole hears a voice that he recognizes as his sister's. She beckons him to follow her, promising to lead him safely through the forest. But as he hurries to catch up with her, the voice gradually transforms into something ominous and malevolent. Suddenly, his sister vanishes, replaced by a female creature known as Skooksraut, whose heart is exposed and whose back is grotesquely split open. In a small village near the woods, a beautiful woman with long black hair appeared. She was unclothed and had a way of luring men into the forest, many of whom never returned, while those who did were forever changed. The villagers, fearing witchcraft, began to persecute old women with dark hair in the village in an attempt to find the mysterious woman. When this proved futile, they reported to burning large areas of the forest in the hopes of driving her out. The villagers grew increasingly desperate and even turned on their own mothers and daughters, burning down the forest and losing all their resources. Sources. One fateful night, during a full moon, five brave men ventured into the forest to find the woman. However, they were quickly entranced by her beauty and she led them deep into the forest, where she transformed into her monstrous form and suspended them on the trees, drawing powers from their sacrifice. Just like in the tale, Ole stumbles upon many men who are hung on the trees, under the control of Skogsraut. Ole tries to free them from their subjugation and end their enchanted slumber, weakening Skogsraut. Route. She then, angered by Ole, tries to deceive him by showing him an apparition of his sister and then making her disappear, making Ole's anger reach a boiling point. He uses his light beaming spark of courage which transforms into a sword and plunges it deep into Skogsraut's heart, ultimately killing her. However, as he kneels over her lifeless body, Ole is struck with a sudden wave of remorse for his actions. He weeps bitterly, overwhelmed by the weight of what he has done and filled with regret for his cruelty towards Skogsraut. The Skogsraut, also known as the Holder, derives her name from the Norwegian word for hidden. As a stunning female creature, she is the protector of the woodland and all the creatures that reside there. The Holder occasionally falls in love with a handsome human male and might lure him into her subterranean caves to spend the remainder of his life with her. Should he follow her, a life of wealth and prosperity awaits him, but he will never see his family again. Alternative 
Alternatively, the holder may choose to spend her life with her human husband. If he treats her with respect, she proves to be a diligent and caring wife. However, if her husband mistreats her, he will live to regret it. This cooks route in the game, however, has the ability to conjure images or illusion of what men most desire. That's why the men see an enchanting, beautiful woman who they follow blindly to the forest. And for Ole, who is looking desperately for his sister, of course, the one he sees and desires the most is a healthy and safe Lillimore. During his travel, Ole comes across a strange creature that has been crucified. The creature possesses a female body and an animal skull, but is still alive. Ole's discovery leads him to a book that sheds light on Karhakshan and its rituals. According to the book, in order to transform from a state of perpetual pain and sorrow into a powerful, fearless entity, one must perform a blood sacrifice. The ritual requires an individual who is always sad and lonely to surrender themselves to the evil spirit and sacrifice a baby and themselves. This process of transmutation ultimately results in the individuals rising as a godlike being or a potent witch, shedding their fragile humanity for immense power. Ole finds himself inside the witch's house, located next to a murky swamp. He hears the distant sounds of a midwife humming and a baby crying and decides to investigate. Ole discovers a woman attempting a ritual on yet another little baby. As the midwife notices Ole, she quickly runs off with the baby before he can intercept. Knowing he must act quickly, Ole engages in a battle with the witch in the swamp to prevent her from taking yet another innocent life. Eventually, triumphing over the witch, Ole traverses through the swamp, which is now filled with the dark souls of the sacrificed babies. He eventually comes across a midwife who sacrifices herself and the baby in order to complete the ritual and become the powerful goddess as promised in the book. He then finds the baby and gives it a proper burial and spares the infant from becoming yet another black soul at the bottom of the swamp. According to Norse beliefs, blood sacrifice used to establish an exchange. Sacrifices were made to the gods with the expectation of receiving something in return. The wench that Ole encountered was an example of this type of sacrifice. She had sacrificed numerous children in blood rituals, using their deaths to increase her power and gain her magical abilities. It is possible that she was once a midwife who had turned to darker practices, keeping the souls of the sacrificed children captive at the bottom of the swamp and drawing upon their sacrifice to bolster her own power. As Ole rows his boat across the lake, he is suddenly startled by the appearance of an eerie old woman with an ashen face, dressed entirely in black and carrying a rake. The woman approaches him from behind and places her hand on his head, unleashing a torrent of cruel mind games that leave Ole reeling. Rats begin to pour out of the woman's mouth as she brandishes her rake menacingly, with intent on sweeping Ole into her sinister game. In Norwegian folklore and old folk tales, the black Death is often personified as an ashen-faced old woman named Pesta. The Black Death was a devastating pandemic that swept through Europe in the 14th century, including Norway in the year 1349. In a matter of months, up to 60% of the Norwegian population succumbed to the disease, leaving a trail of death and destruction in its wake. Pesta's appearance in Norwegian folklore serves as a hunting reminder of this dark period in history and the toll it took on humanity. The name itself, Pesta, was a Norwegian word for the pandemic. She was typically depicted as an ominous figure, bringing fear and panic wherever she went. Pesta traveled from village to village, wielding a broomstick and a rake as her tools of terror. Those who encountered Pesta with a rake knew that some of their people might be spared. But if she began to sweep with a broomstick, it was believed that there was no use in trying to escape, for there would be no survivors left in her wake. According to one of the the tales, Pista once appeared at a lake and asked the ferryman to take her across. She was initially unrecognizable to him. The terrified man begged her to spare his life, offering to let her ride for free in exchange for his life. Pista consulted her large book before responding, I cannot spare your life, but I can make your death a painless one. With the ferryman subsequently returning home exhausted and collapsing into bed, passing away moments later in peace.
Ole finally finds his way to the final giant, the Mountain King, King Niels, whom he must defeat to save his sister from becoming the giant's next meal. He discovers Lelamore trapped in a sack and tries to free her, but the troll arrives and interrupts his plans. He grabs the sack and proceeds feeding Lelamore to the giant Mountain King, while Ole stares in desperation, not knowing what to do. Unsatisfied with his meal, King Niels then stabs and devours the troll before turning his attention to Ole. After a grueling battle, Ole weakens the source of the giant's curse, as the bashing weakened Bramble, allowing the giant to destroy it. In a moment of clarity, King Neil sees Ole and is reminded of his own son. In a daring move to save his sister, Ole then climbs up giant's sword and beard and throws the peril into the giant's mouth. Using the magic peril, Lelemore cuts her way out of the giant's stomach. However, as the giant falls to the floor, Ole appears to have fallen to his death in the process as well. As Lilimor finds her brother's lifeless body on the floor, petrified by what she has witnessed, she uses the spark of courage to bring him back to life, saving him once more. King Neil's story begins in a peaceful kingdom where he with his queen Magdalena expected a longed-for son named Ulrich. Magdalena, however, quickly succumbs to her death due to complications during childbirth. King Niels becomes overwhelmed by extreme sadness, but his son Ulrich was the only glimmer of happiness keeping him alive. One day, Ulrich falls very ill and as the doctors weren't able to help him, they told King Niels about the mythical flower that witches were rumored to use to heal any illness. King Niels then proceeds to search the whole kingdom for the flower and slaying the witches on his way trying to find the mythical flower which could help him heal his son. Eventually, he finds the witch and begs her to give him the flower. However, she warns him to use one petal only as the entire flower can lead to death and raise the bramble, which would consume his mind and lead to the destruction of the entire kingdom. He returns to his kingdom and uses one petal only as instructed by the witch and manages to heal his son Ulrich. The next day, however, he finds his son stabbed to death, which enrages him and overwhelmed with sorrow knowing that all his efforts were in vain. He then uses the entire flower to bring death upon the entire kingdom, which causes him to grow into a colossal size. The witch sees death and destruction caused by King Niels as the aftermath of her giving him the flower. To stop further destruction, she puts a mountain over the kingdom, trapping him in a prison forever. Centuries go by and his mind becomes polluted more and more with the flower, which is implanted on his back. He loses his mind and his vision, being cursed to be fed by the trolls of the forest, unable to escape his chamber, engulfed in darkness and corruption. King Neil, the Mountain King, was likely inspired by Henrik Ebsen's play, Pierre Gent, which features a Mountain King who is widely recognized as one of the most well-known figures in Norse folklore. This particular mountain king is said to reside beneath the Duvrefjell mountain range in southern Norway, which has been associated with troll sightings and legends dating back to the Viking era. In the play, a boy named Pierre Gent was a troubled boy but fell in love with a beautiful girl named Solving. Her parents did not like Pierre and told him to leave their daughter alone. Heartbroken, Pierre ran away and had many adventures, including being taken captive by trolls to the hall of the Mountain King. The king found that he likes this young man and suggested that Pierre could marry his own daughter. But first, he must become a troll. Pierre did not want to become a troll, so he stole from the Mountain King and tried to escape but was caught yet again and imprisoned. Eventually, he agreed to marry the troll king's daughter, Anitra, and was released from the prison. Alright folks, that's about it for this video. What are your thoughts and opinions about the monsters and the bosses that we faced along the way? Let me know in the comment section down below. As always, it's been your host Star, thank you for being here, and I will see you on the next one. Have a fantastic day.